Hey guys, today we're trying Opus Magnum as requested by Patreon subscriber Blue Nexus. Another Zactronics game. Uh, I've done, I've played a little bit of them in the past, but it was a kind of an intentional throwaway where I threw, I, I burned through all of the ones that I was pretty sure I would never do a series on. The programming ones. But the ones I was much more fond of the idea of doing a playthrough of are the ones like Space Chem and Infinifactory and Opus Magnum and so on. Uh... I kind of wanted to play them in order, but uh, but the intimidating thing is, uh, I think the main story of Opus Magnum is a more reasonable, like, 15 hours, but, like, I think I remember seeing the estimated playthrough duration of, of uh, Infinifactory and Space Camp being close to, like, 70 hours or something. It was something high. It was something distressingly high. And they're pretty, especially in uh, Opus Magnum and Infinif... Opus, Mag Opus Magnum and Space Chem are kind of like dry to watch, so I, I was like, oh god, am I going to commit to like a 200 episode playthrough of a puzzle game that people stop watching immediately because it looks like not exciting to watch or something, but I don't know. But hey, here's here's a chance to, uh, Blue Nexus is giving us a chance to at least preview one of these games. Do I just click here, or am I already here? Okay, I guess this is the level select, the world select, and then this is the level select. Transmutation Lab Rules Access is restricted to graduate level alchemical engineering students and faculty only. Any exceptions must be approved by the Chancellor. Keep your student alchemist permit and sigil with you at all times while in the lab. No food or drink is permitted in the lab. Do not sit or lean on transmutation engines or, or their related components. Please keep the area clean for everyone else. That means you. Anateus? Some very f small f font. Introduction. I'm amazed you put off learning how to use the transmutation engine for this long, says Henlin Servin. I was concentrating on working by hand, you know that. I'm Anateus, apparently. Anateus, you're about to graduate. I know. That's why I need you to summarize this all for me as fast as you can. Solve this puzzle to continue. Click there? Is that what I do? Okay. <laughs> Gotta figure out the interface a little bit still. These are reagents. They are the input materials for doing alchemy. This is a product. Your job... Okay. Where are the reagents and where are the product? It's not entirely clear to me what these two windows are pointing at. Maybe they mean this? Oh yeah, product. You can highlight it. Okay. So, so this area that's framed is the product and the rest of the level is the reagents. Because, yeah, it, it, this, I think this is basically an evolution of Space Chem in a, on a hex grid where you're sort of, like, combining and changing and messing with things to all make the final product then get put in the final location where it has to be the correct things connected to each other in the correct shape, which is what Space Chem was. I played Space Chem for, like, an hour during a lunch break once. That's my experience with this, with the, this company, mostly. It was good. Your job as an alchemist is to build machines that combine reagents into useful products. To complete a puzzle, build all products. Press the play button below to start the transmutation engine. This is the instruction tray. Instructions tell the machine's parts what to do. This is going to be interesting to learn. Okay, so just do? But they decided the best way to teach us how to play the game is just to have us watch a solution happen. <laughs> That's like the best we can do to start figuring out. Is we just need to see this game in motion first. And then once we see it in motion, we can try to re replicate what happened there. So there's a few things happening there. So this thing pulls out two things. This one pulls out one thing. And when, the th when these two and that one are connected, it then pushes it over to here. And so the, the instructions here, that's arm one and arm two. It does a rotation, then goes back, and then does a second rotation. So I think this this probably is it grabbing a block. Yeah, because it rotates 
counterclockwise, which this is counterclockwise two spaces, so it goes counterclockwise two spaces and drops it off. Then it goes back. It, yeah, so pick up must be the full circle, let go must be the empty circle. So it lets go and then goes back two spaces, then it picks up again and then goes forward two spaces and then back and yeah, it loops that cycle over and over again. And the act of it doing that, it looks like if it puts one, if it, if it moves a, uh, an, a molecule, no, an atom, an element, well, yeah, that, that, that's definitely what we're supposed to go for, it's, it's alchemy. When it moves an element to the same space the other one was already in, it pushes that one along that direction. And then this guy took this one and moved it down here, so pick it up, move two, then push, then let go, then go back. So push out and then retract, because it gets longer. Because this, uh, this one puts one down, then they both move one in at the same time. Then once both of them are in at the same time and the, and the molecule has been made with the three elements, this arm then pushes it into the receptacle to turn it in. Then retracts, then goes back, and then it loops. Wait, and you look at the track at the bottom, there's like... <coughs> there's like 20 instructions on the screen, so... Making that happen is going to be interesting. Understand so far? Of course, I knew this part was easy. That's why I never worried about it. I count you as a friend, I'm, I'm an Anateus, but sometimes you carry your genius alchemist act a little too far. Act. <laughs> so let's take the first and most important part, the arm. I understand. What's next? Wait, don't rush ahead. Let me go through the material. You'll need to see this. Place an arm below. Set the rotation and length so that the gripper is over the reagent. Then add instructions to the instruction tray below to make it pick up the reagent and move it to the output, uh, the product output. Okay, so... Arm? Cool. This is arm three. Reagent product. So let's put it over the reagent tray. This is the product. Pick up the reagent and move it to the product output. So grab. Rotate. Can I make the rotate bigger? Okay, so. Let's hit play. Okay. That's what I thought. So rotation goes by one hexagonal direction. So we need to go from this direction to that direction to that direction to that direction. So one, two, three is a 180 in this game. And then drop. Move it to the output. Yep. And we can go back to spinning again. And that does that's a full loop. There we go. Ah, I've knocked everything over. Ah, I've hit my microphone. Everything's gone wrong. happens when I hesitate to take shit to the recycling. <laughs> I make danger towers. There we go. Right, so arms pick up and move elemental proxies around the surface of the transmutation engine. Right, and you can control their behavior with instructions, yes, of course. Of course. In some cases, you'll want an arm to rotate what it's gripping. You mean as opposed to the arm itself rotating? That's right. In those cases, you'll use pivot instructions. So that's when you... So when you have one element, that shouldn't matter. But when you have a molecule, then you want to rotate the entire thing. If it's not going to match up with its where it's going, basically. Place an arm here. 
pick up the reagent and move it to the out, uh, product output. So here's the reagent, there's the output, and it's not gonna be facing the right direction when it gets there. So we'll rotate one left. Oopsie. Boop. So now we need to use the pivot. There we go. So that should be the loop, basically. Take it there, rotate it, drop it. Yep. All right. Relatively intuitive. Despite how intimidating this part of the screen is with how crowded it gets with stuff. All very straightforward and simple. How nice that this is so easy for you. Why? How long did it take you to learn all this? Let's just keep going. I'm always- I'm impressed when I see some of the more recent games by this developer and like how there's so much art going into it and writing going into it, which is like, it's unexpected for the kind of puzzle game it is. You kind of almost expect it just to be like mass, just just burn through all these puzzles, but I've heard some of the narrative stuff can actually be pretty good in these games. And uh, this developer put out, uh, Zachtronics put out a visual novel at one point where it's just that. So I guess they committed at one point. A piston arm is a special kind of arm that can extend and retract. And presumably there are instructions that control the piston. That's right, I'll demonstrate. Yeah, we saw that in the first demonstration, but I don't think I've had access to it till now. Yep, it can extend and retract. Place it below, add instructions to pick up the reagent and move it to the product output. So, there's the reagent, so... Doo -doo -doo. So start here, then rotate one, two, clockwise, we'll pick it up first. Then rotate twice clockwise, then we want you to come inward by one, and... Oh, in this lesson, the drop instruction is disabled. You must use a reset instruction instead. I was like, what the fuck am I... What? I was like, what happened? Where is it? Did I do this right? Oopsie. Uh... Atoms may not collide. Okay. Pick up. Oops. That's pivot. Not rotate. So I guess reset just makes the arm go back to its original pose. Which I guess is help handy for not having to actually program how to pretend it sent it back. Because so far I've had to tell it how to like reset by telling it to reset, rewind the correct number of times. And in this case I'd have to tell it to go back clockwise two rotations and then extend by one and then so and so on. So that removes several steps from the loop that I don't have to do myself anymore. I see. Piston arms can reach areas you can't with a normal arm. That's what, that's, what, that's what makes them so useful. They cost a little bit more than regular arms, though. Cost? So that, so that plays in, I guess, to your grading system? I can use the reset instructions to make an arm return to its initial state from wherever it is that's convenient. Just remember the reset instruction takes the same amount of time it would take to issue those individual instructions. Well, yes. Of course it will. Of course. What's next? Next we have tracks. Which are like paths you can place on the board. It's easier to show you. Oh, the arm can move now. Okay. Create a track. Between the reagent and the product, then place an arm on the track and add instructions to make it pick up the reagent and move it to the product output. Ooh. You can move the entire track. I'm trying to match this one. 
Oh wait, it starts on minus. Oops, I was right the first time. It probably, it might not matter. There's an arm on the track. And that's our reagent, so... Oop. We're gonna pick up. Alright. Place an arm on the track and add instructions to make it pick up the reagent and move it to the product output. So, pick up. Then there's a move on track option. So... What's that mean? Oh! You move one by one. That's a, that's a negative instruction. So it moves towards the plus or towards the minus the number of spaces you put these in. So one, two will take me to plus. Then I'm going to want to rotate twice. That's pivot again, isn't it? I'm going to mess that up a lot, aren't I? So rotate twice. So that should be good. Drop it. Then reset. Let's see if I messed up. Your machine successfully created the desired products. It's very satisfying to look at. I see. When you place an arm on a track, the arm can move forward or backward along the path. Tracks can be quite powerful, but I'm still learning how to use them effectively in my designs. Could you put multiple arms onto a single track? I think so. I never thought to try that. I'll have to experiment later. There'd be a circular track? Because otherwise multiple arms sounds like bad? If they can't overlap? I don't know. To perform transmutations, we use glyphs. For example, say I want to calcify an element. You'd place a glyph of calcification on the board and move the element you want to calcify over it. Anateus! I mean, yes, that's correct, but at least let me get to the explanation first. I got all the explanation I need. Use the piston arm. Boop. To... And a glyph of calcification. Here's the glyph. Turn the reagent, a fire atom, into the product, a salt atom. So fire gets calcified into salt. So six salt has to go here. Okay. They gave me a piston arm, so I think they're setting me up to do this. We'll pick up here. We'll rotate once clockwise, which should take us here. That'll, then it'll calcify, so I'll retract by one. Then reset. There we go. I'm honestly picking this up faster than I thought I would. <laughs> this, this is a tutorial that works. It's quite fast, this glyph. Yes, welcome to modern alchemical engineering. How many transmutations are available as glyphs? Most of the common ones so far. There's ongoing research to develop more, which one, which you would uh, know about if you paid any attention to recent developments in your field. This must be the glyph of bonding. It is. To use it, actually. Why don't you show me how it works? Seems that's the way things are going here. Very well. Glyph of Bond. Oh, yeah. So we saw this in the first demonstration also. It's when they became a molecule instead of just a bunch of individual elements. So they, they bonded together. Then they move as a group. So now I'm, now I'm ready to make what we saw earlier. Biostabilized salt, the desired output of this alchemical machine. Elemental salt. Okay, so we're getting it as salt. Okay. It's, this is also our first time running two arms at once. But it shouldn't be that bad. So three is going to rotate... Well, first, they're all both going to pick something up. Three is going to rotate once counterclockwise. 
Four is going to rotate once clockwise. It's counterclockwise, clockwise, yep. And then... I wonder, I wonder if I'll need some kind of waiting command or something. Hmm. They pick up, they put them together. Four is going to let go. And three... They must bond immediately, right? The three is going to then rotate again counterclockwise, taking it up to here. But that this is shaped this way, so it's going to point this way. So we need to then rotate. Then we'll reset. Ah, I can delay the reset action so they happen together, it looks like. Maybe that maybe they'll be out of sync though, we'll find out. They they seem yeah. Despite the different number of instructions, it looks like they ultimately wait for each other, so we don't have to worry about them getting out of loop with out of sync with each other on the looping. Good to know. The transmutation engine makes alchemical engineering far simpler. You could have been using it the whole time. But I'm glad I did things the hard way for so long. I hope you're not like this in real life, Anateus. This is real life. Oh, he said it. <laughs> hmm. But this is real life. <laughs> oh no. I think that's everything you need to know to use the transmutation engine effectively. I'll make one more product to make sure I get it. The building area, parts, trays, and instruction tray can all be panned by right-clicking anywhere and dragging your mouse. If you have a mouse with a scroll wheel, you can also vertically scroll through the parts and instruction trays. Like these ones, you mean? Oh yeah, that's what you mean. I can right-click to move it around too. From now on, you will place products and reagents on your own. They're on the top of your tool toolbox. Oh. Okay. So my goal is to make this, apparently. Here's my reagents. That's not good. <laughs> okay. So we, have sta we need stabilized water. Stabilized water? What makes it stabilized? I'm not super clear on that. Okay, so we have elemental water. What do we have? Glyphs. Calcification. It turns anything into salt. Doesn't even matter what it originally was. It turns it into neutral salt. Glyph of equilibrium. Perfectly balanced in all aspects. It does nothing but remain where it is placed. What? Perfectly balanced in all aspects, the glyph of equilibrium does nothing but remain where it is placed. Some alchemi alchemists use it as a convenient marker or for aesthetic considerations. It costs nothing. It's just kind of chilling out. You can rotate it. I could use a reminder. Is that salt? What is stabilized water? It's two different molecules, apparently. So my understanding of these games is that you get histograms and you get like these graphs that compare you against all the other players and there's different ways of winning. You can have different kinds of efficiency. One of the kinds of efficiency is the fewest actions, while another kind of efficiency is uh, fewest parts, essentially. So when they say that these all have uh, cost, I think that's mostly what they're talking about. I don't think these things cost an amount. Uh, like, I don't, think, I don't think I have a budget to spend in the first place. So I'm not limited, it's just that my score is determined by how many things I use. Bonding, unbonding, hello. Calcification. Let's see. Transmutation. 
That's salt. Okay, I just wanted to double check. It's a minor quibble I have with the interface of the, of the game is that when I highlight this, it tells me it's stabilized water. I'm like, that's not helpful. I'm trying to tell what that is. And nowhere on the screen can I tell what that is, so I have to remember from the previous screen that they're talking about salt. Alright, so I figured they wanted me to use a, a glyph, and that is the case. Hmm. <clears throat> Ideally, I'd make these like equidistant-ish. Fixed length arm. Blah! Oh my goodness. What a nightmare. So you can have multiple arms attached to the same device and have them all operate at once, which is a lot. I guess it might reduce your number of actions because you'd be pick you get to be picking up and dropping off at the same time. Like a lot. Presumably you can give each individual part of it like a different command or something. I'm gonna not massively overcomplicate this if I can avoid it. This seems ideal. Hmm. Like, this is a good example, I think, of what can be done <clears throat> if you want to symbolize, if you want to, this is me going, let's see, do I have pistons? I do have a piston. Here's what I could potentially do if I want to minimize the uh, budget, uh, to some extent, of how much I'm spending uh, for parts while not necessarily minimizing my budget for uh, uh, time. So this, I'm gonna make a really inefficient solution time-wise that is really efficient for parts-wise, at least by my estimation. I'm not I'm claiming I'm gonna wow anyone that actually knows how to play the game. Like we can, we can, uh, we can pick this up, turn clockwise once to calcify it, then turn... I don't know if this will work or not. Am I allowed to go over the square that the previous one was in, or is it going to cause a conflict? So go here, then go here. But you can't collide with a previous one. Hmm. So let's instead pick it up. <clears throat> go, yeah, counterclockwise then extend by one, then reset, then we go clockwise, no, then we pick one up and go clockwise, then counterclockwise twice, then three times? Let's see if this works, I'm just kind of fucking around now. Yep. Atoms cannot collide, okay. Hmm. I can get creative with this, though. I'm, I'm, I'm committing to my stupid solution now. Let's reverse this. That should be easy enough. So pick it up, go over one, do not extend. Just reset normally. So, pick it up, go counterclockwise once, and just drop it off. Then once we're reset, you pick it up, you extend by one, then go counterclockwise once, then go counterclockwise again. Let's see if this works. Hey, uh-oh. <laughs> I forgot to that's, that's my I forgot to hit reset. There we go. Hey, look how fucking clean that looks actually. Wow, that's actually a really small number that's a decently small number of actions too. While also having very few parts. Interesting. There you go. So somebody was able so there's the histograms that compare what I I'm doing to everybody else.
So oh, there's three things we're getting judged on. One is what I'm spending to make my thing. One is how fast my thing solves the puzzle. And one is how much area I, may, I take up. It's like how many things I placed. And you can independently try to solve all of these. <clears throat> I think that trying to optimize any of these counteracts your ability to optimize the other thing. Sometimes you can be optimized. Sometimes you can optimize everything at once at least more than you did before. But usually if you want to get the best score in, in any one of these, you have to sacrifice the other ones. So I could do this faster if I took up more space and used more parts, because I could have another arm working in concert. But I got basically the best possible score for you, uh, using the fewest parts. Just one person did a slightly, slightly better one. So th this is a reef right here <coughs> from the... Uh, Overcooked videos and lovers in a dangerous space time and a few other videos and uh, and uh, ba -ba 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 what's it called uh, Twilight Imperium a reef's been in a, in a few different videos and so that's that's his score I'm being compared against so I use less budget than him but he had a faster solution that used that took up less space less space okay record gif uh, no. So what are your plans after you graduate? I think I'll be head alchemist for one of the August houses. That's bold. Right out of school? Why not? True enough, no ambition could be too great for you. And yourself? I like it here. I think I'll stick around and hopefully become a, a professor. You do seem to have an affinity for teaching. Think so? Well then. May each of us realize his opum opus magnum. There it goes. That's the name of the thing. Opus magnum. I've always found that to be a rather pretentious term, but I agree with the sentiment at least. Why are you laughing? Anatea's Vaya found something pretentious. Tell me more. Chapter 2, or 1, I guess. That was the tutorial. Letter of Congratulations. Dear Anateus, <clears throat> congratulations on your appointment to the position of head alchemist to the House Van Tassen. I'm very pleased to see you find a position in line with your talents and abilities. As you prepare to leave the academic life, I want to offer you a word of advice. The politics of the city are much harsher and more dangerous than those of the academy. You are singu a singularly gifted talent, and I would hate to see you get caught up in these conflicts. The alchemist's place is not to sink to the level of those around us, but to rise above them in service of our art. Best of luck to you. Nadine Tolomeo, Professor and Chair, College of Alchemical Engineering, Imperial University. Check out this map. Look at the, these giant buildings. I think that's a river going through the under the skyscraper? In fact, it looks like the skyscraper's floating. Like it's built into the sides of these other two buildings, but the entire under area below the bit tall tallest tower is entirely open air, which is in intimidating. <coughs> so, how did it go? A nightmare. Armand kept going through his old stories about honor and righteousness. Then, Lady Van Tassen looks like she's embalmed. Frederick spilled food down the front of his shirt. What a brave man you are, surviving a formal dinner. It really is difficult, though. I can't stand the stuffiness. I'm surprised we've changed dialogue screens and styles. Armand didn't remember my name. Captain Gelt had to prompt him several times. To be fair, you started only rather recently. Yes, I suppose it's too much to ask. Such a complicated, burdensome thing to remember one single name. The name of your new alchemist. The one who grant graduated at the top of his class from the College of Alchemical Engineering. Anateus. See? You remember my name just fine. Think Armand would know my name? Keeping in mind, I've been here my whole life. Maybe next time you can go in my place. He might not even realize it's a different person. Hmm. Alchemist? Provisioner? Which one are you again? Hmm. Yes. Hmm. 
You'll get us in trouble. I've been doing this for years. Refined gold. Well, this is an odd first project. I feel like someone's having a laugh at my expense. Why? Were you asked to create the Philosopher's Stone? Close, actually. One more guess. Transform lead into gold? Yes. Apparently there's an old Van Tassen lead mine. And wouldn't it be better if it produced gold instead? Armand suggested it so casually. Sounds wonderful. Time to put your university degree to the test. <clears throat> the glyph of projection consumes an atom of quicksilver and promotes an atom of metal to its next higher form. By doing this repeatedly, even lead, the basest metal can be transmuted into the finest gold. Huh. Seems a bit easier than expected. It's supposed to be the big, tough thing is for... Like, that's, that's the stereotypical thing about, uh... Alchemy, is turning lead into gold. But anything that deals with this media always needs to riff on this, but we got to it faster than expected. So here's lead, and there's gold. Elemental Quicksilver. This glyph of projection consumes an atom of quicksilver and promotes an atom of metal to its next highest form. Let's see. I need to figure out how we're going to lay this all out. So here's the lead, there's the quicksilver, and there's where the gold's supposed to go. I wonder how stupid I can make this. Let's start you off here, should be pretty straightforward. We want to pick up the the lead. That's the quicksilver, right? Yeah. We want to rotate once clockwise, and then at some point later, we want to rotate further and then reset. <clears throat> I'll simplify that later. Now, how stupid can I make this? I guess one question is how many quicksilver do I need to make lead? to pick you up, rotate once, reset. Okay. That makes... I want to see what it's currently been turned into. What is the hierarchy of metals? I see I'm, I'm far too tempted I'm far too tempted to be stupid about this. That's so stupid. Look how stupid this is. Oops. And that may not be moved in two different directions at once. My attempts to be stupid are taking more effort. It's hard work being stupid. 
Atoms and arm bases may not collide. Okay, so they can't go through each other. Yep. It's gonna actually be way more work than it's worth to be stupid about this. Okay, so let's go ahead and get rid of you guys. It's been fun. Anyway. <laughs> you will pick it up. You will go once counterclockwise. Let's get rid of these. Nope. And then you will reset. You'll pick it up. Go once counterclockwise. And you will reset. Is there like a repeating system? Repeat instruction. Ooh. Repeat. Repeat. Repeat? How much repeat do I need? N nope, four is not enough. Alright. Repeat. Yeah, I wanted to have a bunch of arms that were all quick loading it at once, but it actually got to really complicated really fast. So I should just do the really obvious thing and just do what you're supposed to do here. Ah, I made a gold now, so that should be it, right? Yeah, I didn't know. I don't. I don't know the sequence of metals, so I didn't know how many I needed. There we go. Probably should have counted it from the tutorial. Yeah, it would, it would have been hard to have five separate arms. Is what I would have needed. I would have needed five arms. All right. Well, I'm. Yep. Looks like basically everyone on the planet made the same freaking diagram that I did. I'm tied with basically everyone. Although I take 142 cycles while Arif shaved 40 cycles off of that. But mine costed less and took up less space. But his was faster. That's the back and forth here. I don't know. Let me know in the audience how pretentious his username is. I don't really know what it means, to be honest. Can you make lead into gold? I can scarcely believe it. Well, is this finished with now? Like asking a fish if it can swim. You're taking this remarkably poorly, Anateus. I was expecting a challenge, that's all. Sounds like you want a chance to show off. I'm not sure I'd go that far. I should probably just make the first solution that comes to mind in most of these. Whoa! Non-linearity just popped up out of nowhere. Yeah, I should probably generally just take the path of least resistance and just do whatever solution comes naturally instead of trying to be that creative and weird with it. But uh, that's where the that's where the replay value comes in is that you can go back and play the same missions over and over again and try to win, try to get the best score on each different type of solution at once. Well, not at once. Have you seen Lady Van Tassen recently? A few days ago. Why? Did you notice how pale her face is? Oh, she's well known for her pallor. Why? Why? Did someone ask you to do something about it? Armand himself did. It seems it's gotten worse lately. People are whispering about her health. That's unfortunate. The lady hasn't had an easy time of things. I'd hate to see her slander slandered on top of it all. We're gonna make her face powder, apparently. Which is... These two things. It's salt and elemental earth. And you can turn anything into salt, so... That's not the biggest problem for me. Right, that's the product. Gotta remember that we have to couple it. I can't just place things there. I keep wanting to place things directly in the product space, but I have to craft the individual pieces first. Okay, so let's make salt and elemental earth. This part's pretty straightforward. Just pick it up, go over by one, then reset. 
the other arm will have a slight uh, the, the other arm has a slightly harder time of things Let's see okay I don't get to have two elemental earths gotcha I wonder how this will even interact. Let's find out. So one is now going to go right instead of left. Clockwise. And then reset. Two is going to go counterclockwise. Three times. That's colliding, apparently. I guess that makes sense. Hmm. They can't fit past each other that easily. That's only gonna make things worse. Right, this was also misplaced for that purpose. There, that's a little bit of better space man management. So now, one picks it up, goes over one and reset. Yeah, it's still the same, but you're gonna have a different job. I need to make you a piston arm. Two. There we go. So you'll grab it, then you will retract by one. Then go. Oopsie. So now this is two. Two retracts it by one, then goes two over like this. I think I set that up right. Let's double check. <laughs> I forgot to do a reset. Like you do. Alright. Okay. Yeah. That one doesn't make any sense. Atoms may not collide. I'm back in the same problem again. Hmm. Making them not collide is proving deceptively difficult. Okay, let's rotate the opposite direction. One, two, th we have to do three times. There we go, okay. That's how you get it all clean. So today was our lesson on how messy it gets that the, oh, oh, if you use a long arm, it has, it has a huge hitbox over the course of its movement. And so a lot of things can collide. Yeah, interpretations immediately gotten wider here. My solution does not appear to be impressive. <laughs> I beat a reef on budget, but nothing else. His was twice as fast as mine uh, and took up less space. There's a big split here. People had a big breakthrough on budget. So while a reef's price was over here at like the highest end of the curve, like really inefficient on price, and I was ahead of him, there's like a big gap here. And then suddenly a ton of people have a way, way cheaper one too. Hmm.
This should help the lady's face look less pale, though it's quite a superficial solution. Who can really say what troubles the lady, Van Tassen? It's not for us to know. Have you ever heard her speak? She didn't say a word during the dinner I went to. I remember her speaking to me once or twice when I was a child. Odd. Just another, just, an, just another one of the many Van Tassen mysteries, I suppose. One gets used to them after a while. Sounds like she can't speak. Do you know much about ships, Concordia? Our merchant fleet delivers goods from overseas about once a month. Why? Captain Gelt told told me they used to have some kind of substance they put on the hull so they don't rot. I don't know anything about that. Have you ever been on a ship? I haven't, no. You? Not at all, it sounds ghastly. Being tossed around on the ocean? Then getting eaten by the sea monsters? I'm not sure all sea voyages are like that. Enough of them are. Are they? Are those real in this universe? Ooh, multi-bonding. Creates three bonds at once. Do we need multi-bond? So here's our product. It's it's multi-bond, but it's not that big of a multi-bond. So you could do two glyphs of bonding and it costs less than a multi-bond. But technically it takes up the same number of squares. This takes up four, and this this would these would take up four. Can you bond these two and then those two? Is that an option? Hmm. Curious. And we only get one of each regent again. Okay. So generally speaking, I can plan out all of my motions first and then start programming them to make them actually happen. I don't have to nail it all in the first get-go. So atoms can't collide, so my initial assumption that you could slide them was wrong, wasn't it? Unless there was another mechanic somewhere. Maybe there was another mechanic? Maybe. This unbonds. I don't need any salt this time. I'm terrified to look at this thing. So we could drop off one there and one there. And two could have rotated over here. leaning a bit towards unnecessarily complicated kind of just because I can maybe I have a problem uh, do, do let's go put that there switch that then it can go there there so this could be the deliverer this could work so one we'll pick it up rotate it twice clockwise reset pick it up go once clockwise 
reset. At which point, two... ...can pick it up. Rotate once clockwise. Reset. Three can immediately pick up its one. Rotate once counterclockwise. Then it has to wait all the way over here to rotate once more. Oops. Counterclockwise. And then reset. I haven't really proofread this one, but let's see. So the atom collides with the item with the arm's base location. Hmm. 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 What an annoying problem to have. Let's make it dumber. <laughs> do do those are the two white. green <laughs> oh it's so dumb okay so white goes two over reset grab one over reset then two the psychopath that it is it grabs and it retracts. Three grabs, rotates over one. And three no longer does its thing anymore. And you retract and you reset. I didn't really proofread this one either, so let's find out what happens. Arm cannot extend or retract. <laughs> That's fair. Hey, look how it cleans up. It actually looks really clean. Oh, I like it. It's weirdly satisfying. I did well on area. I beat a reef by five spaces and by 30 on budget. So I'm beating my friend, but he got me on a f he got me on speed. <clears throat> I think he's gonna optimize for speed most of the time. I think that I think that's his go-to. Even though he he only got 46 though, somebody got 25. It looks like uh, these are kind of low resolution graphs, but it looks like somebody got about 25. So some you can get really fast apparently. Do do do. With this sealant ready, the fleet should soon. Be ready to set sail again and bring back, well, whatever it brings. They're loaded with all kinds of things. Cloth, pottery, mineral ores, rare herbs, strange stones. Sometimes even animals. Sounds like good business. I'm not sure. Those contracts were drawn up centuries ago. I doubt even Armand knows the details. Hangover cure. 
Should I do one? Let's do one more. And then round this out. If I'd known I was going to be tasked with curing a hangover. Oh, I bet I know who asked you for that. It was Captain Gelt, wasn't it? How'd you guess? It would be good for him to be at least somewhat functional in the mornings. Yeah, seems prudent for the head of security for this entire house to not be totally incapacitated on a regular basis. Let's not go too far. Hangover cure is apparently water and salt. Just distilled water. Okay. What a what a cure. <laughs> so we're just trying to quickly make Hmm. Trying to quickly make something clean here. Oh, that's not going to work. I was thinking about how to quickly, like, I could have an arm rotate this way and an arm rotate that way. When I thought about that, I was like, oh yeah, water, salt, salt. So turn into salt as it goes. But the flaw in this plan is that this would also become salt. So I can't just push this forward into there. That is problem. <laughs> also, I keep thinking you can push them directly into the solution, but you have to bond them first, too. So that's a bit of an issue on its own level. Hmm. It's an interesting complication dealing with the fact that they only give me one source block in many cases. That makes things weirder. Some attempted cleverness is not going over so hot. Did they even give me a track, by the way? There, there yeah, that's the tr that's what the track is. It's a little hard to think in terms of tracks in this game. They're weird. I do sort of wonder how weird I can make this. I haven't used tracks yet, so let's do, let's use a track in a solution, as opposed to just in a demo. I'll have something going on here, right? Okay, so we'll set up the source block. This is going to be a big, silly one, isn't it?
What's messing with me a little bit is I keep thinking of solutions where you like conveniently drag the water through the salt on the way to its destination, which makes me want to put the salt in the way between the source and the destination. But that really complicates the process of making one of them not turn into salt. <clears throat> so that's not helping me out greatly right now. Let's have number one. This is gonna get sp this is gonna get messy. You're almost certainly gonna have to be a piston. Two's gonna get creative. Is it gonna have to be that small? Am I gonna be this dumb? Am I gonna go do something like this? <sighs> that could work in its own dumb way. You know, this is easier if you guys are one and two and you're three. Just for my sake of my brain. Because three is the finale. So it's just easier. Alright, so. <clears throat> one has a longer way to go. Two has a longer way to go, I mean. Let's make it one. So one starts off by grabbing... And then it rotates a lot of times. One, two, three, four times. This is not gonna be an efficient system, but it looked neat, I think. And I wanted to use tracks, so that's part of the thought process here. So one, two, three, four. Then I'll have one fifth one to go. So plus, plus. One last one. Reset. Two is going to then grab. It's going to rotate one, two, three, four this way. Plus. Rotate again. Reset. We might be allowed to we might be allowed to rewind back to here. We'll see if a collision happens. That does help line the back up more. Three. Hmm. Elements cannot cannot collide with arms, and these arms are going to be in the way of three. I wish I could move all of these. Maybe you can. Eh, you can reorder them. I'll just start with, I'll write out, I'll write out three's instructions, then I'll move them all past that. So three has to grab, rotate one, two, three. And it's going to wait there. Definitely wish I had noticed this sooner. This this probably a way to move a bunch of instructions at once, isn't there? Just 
So the important thing is this has to happen before we get to the part where it moves. So actually, while it's doing all of these... Maybe three doesn't have to go first. Three is going to rotate in here. So it just has to rotate before either of these mo move. So it has to be done before that. So if it's rotating towards two, then actually three can pick it up last. <coughs> We can pick it up last because it's rotating. It's rotating clockwise. So it'll move by before two even moves because the plus sign for the two is all the way back here. All right, so it goes over here and it hangs out for a bit. These guys both drop off their pieces at like the same time. And that is when three extends twice. And then resets. We'll see if this works or not, or if I made it a mis blip. It may not be moved in two directions at once. Ah, everything has to be spaced out by more. So I have to think about these as two separate stages. It picks it up and then it moves it. And if the other one is trying to pick it up while the other one's moving it, then that's it getting grabbed by one arm while the other arm's, arm's trying to move it, and that doesn't work. That looks nice. It's definitely not that fast, but it looks nice. But boom I'm bad at everything. <laughs> I am worse than the bell curve on every measure. Hooray! And yet I still beat a reef on budget. He just doesn't... he just spends. He just spends all he can to make it fast, apparently. Well, this has been Opus Magnum. If you would like to check this game out, there's a link in the description to its Steam page. Thanks for watching like always, guys, and I'll see you next time. Oh, that dialogue. There are days where I wish I could use such a cure myself. Here, have some. What? This isn't for me, Anateus. If you get caught, it's fine. There's a secret. My amazing hangover cure is water. Just plain water? Captain Gelt has no idea, but apparently he loves it. Works wonders, he says. That's rather funny. Also, I'll never trust an alchemist again. You shouldn't. Hey! Alright, see you guys next time.